Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Have you ever wondered what part you play in your company? Are you younger, full of fresh ideas, or are you older, full of wisdom and experience? That's what we'll talk about today. Musicians don't retire. They stop when there's no more music left inside them. Robert De Niro, The Intern. Today we're going to talk about the book, Wisdom at Work, The Making of a Modern Elder, by Chip Conley. This question has always been kind of perplexing to me about the roles we play in the workforce. When we're either very young or we're getting older, how can we contribute to a company at all stages in our lives? It used to be when I was a kid, the adults would work for just a handful of companies, maybe one or two, their whole lives. And then they would retire at that company. They would have worked at that company for 40 years and then would have gotten some kind of a clock as a reward for working in the company all that time. But now people seem to move companies quite a bit. They either change locations, they change companies, they even change the entire jobs that they're doing. We have a lot of wanderlust when it comes to sticking with a particular career. And then you start thinking about it. I've been at my company now for almost 15 years. And if you're not the kind of person who wants to move companies a lot, do you still have a place in that company when you're someone who's been there for a long time? It reminds me of Indiana Jones when he was talking about how beat up he was. And he says, it's not the years, it's the miles. And sometimes it is the miles that make us feel beat up when we're in a job. Because whether we've been at a company a short time or a long time, we can feel a little burned out, depending on what's been happening in that company. We also can feel ourselves getting older when we're getting in the company. Not so much because of the age, but because that experience starts to build up and build up. And I think we start realizing that there are some best practices. And when someone goes outside that best practice, we often get a little burned up about it. I remember I worked for a company that wasn't really about laying off old people. They just got rid of the experienced people because the inexperienced people cost less money. And she was going to boss them around anyway and tell them how to do their jobs. So why would she bother with experience when she just wanted a bunch of people to boss around? And even so, we have to fight that whole feeling of getting older. And I think, too, that as we get older and we start getting more stuck in our ways, just because we have that experience that we have under our belt, we have to realize that we can't let ourselves get too stuck in our experience because that can be bad, too. There was a podcast episode several years ago by a fellow named Colin Wright on Let's Know Things. And he doesn't keep a lot of his older podcasts around, so I couldn't find that episode. But he remembers when emojis came out and he thought, who needs that? This is just silly. Stickers and emojis just text each other. And then he realized, wow, I'm getting old. I just shot down something completely without understanding it without trying it, just because I thought it was useless. And he thought that's the stage of getting old where it becomes damaging to you because you're no longer open to new experiences. And I even had a friend who had her husband at the age of 50 decide to go back to school because he says, I still have 20 years in the work world. And he wanted to do something that would make him happy. Even if we do get older and we get more stuck in our ways at work, we have to learn that we want to be happy. We have to learn to be open to new ideas. And we have to look at ways of making sure that everybody feels like they have a part in this company, in this job. For a long time, I had a boss who was much younger than I was. He was probably one of the best bosses I had. He was very concerned about the team and very concerned about the people in his team and making sure that they grew in the proper way. A lot of times when you hear someone who's older, who has a younger boss, they might feel 
burned up about it. Maybe they should be the boss. Why aren't I the boss? Why is that person the boss? Or what does that person really have to tell me? Meanwhile, a younger person might look at an older person and think, they have my spot. They have what I want to do. Why are they in my way? Why are they in the position that I could be in if they would just leave? Why won't they retire? But instead, what we have to realize is that we complement each other. The newer work people have new ideas, fresh ideas. I met people in my last job who came out of college learning things and concepts that I learned later in the work world because I started teaching it in college. Our college experiences were entirely different. Meanwhile, I have a lot of experience in this job, which was valuable. So what can we do to take the young people's fresh ideas, new way of thinking, good college experience, and mixing them with more experienced people in the workforce that have valuable ideas, experiences, we tried something and this is how it went wrong, or this is something we haven't tried and wow, that's probably a really good idea. And what happens to you as you're getting older, particularly in the work world, is you start feeling like you have your work under you. Like you feel like I'm starting to get this. You start to get some confidence, some courage. You're even able to let go a little bit because you feel like you have gotten this down. You got your job down and you're feeling pretty good about it. He says that a lot of times when we're getting older, he talks about this quote from Bernard Baruch, who said, old age is always 15 years older than I am. We always think of the other person as being older, and we never think of ourselves as being that. Instead, we start just feeling like we've gained some confidence because we have seen things before. But other times, I think, Younger people, instead of looking towards their strength, can feel over their head, maybe like they have fake confidence or someone's going to find out that they're not really as good at the things they hope they were good at or the things they said during their job interview, they're going to get found out. Older people feel like maybe they're going to get laid off because they make more money or because they just don't have those great ideas anymore, that they're not fresh. And he even suggests in this book that a lot of times when people are into their 50s, the next time they leave a company, it won't be their decision and they won't get another job that is as good as the job that they had. And that makes people worried. The answer to it, he says, is that you should have the mentality of being a mentor, helping the people around you do better and learn from your experience, but also be that intern where you ask great questions. You learn from people around you. One of the people at my work once said about me that he thought I gave the most respect to brand new employees, more so than he'd seen from anybody. That a lot of times when a new employee comes in, they feel this sense of competition with a new employee and they almost want them to fail so they can look smarter. And he said he never felt that way around me. And I don't really know why that is, But I think it's because I always try to ask questions and I always try to give people a certain amount of respect with their experiences, with what they've learned. Obviously, if you have someone fresh out of college, they haven't had a lot of experiences in doing this particular job, but they have had experiences. And it may be they learn customer service while being a lifeguard or working as a volunteer in their grandmother's retirement home, but somehow they gained experience enough to be in that job and enough to get hired in this position. And that's worth some respect right there. So we always have to make sure we give that respect to the younger employees, but the younger employees should also respect the people in the company who've been there a long time, who have vast experience, who've been through things before, and make sure that they understand that their experience is valuable, that they're still wanted at that company. Chip Conley has that great idea when he says that we should be a mentor, that combination of mentor and intern, that we should never lose our creativity, but also never lose that desire to help other people. And he says that a modern elder 
doesn't have to be a person of any given age or even someone that has a certain level of experience. They just have to be someone who has the ability to help other people do the best of their ability. And that we should look at these people around you as future rock stars in the company, future people who are going to move and shake the company. I know it can be a bit depressing. I've spent a good number of years in my job training people only to have them take some of the positions that I wanted to hold inside the company. You can get depressed about it, or you can look at people around you as the enemy or the competition, but it doesn't do you any good. You're at that point where you're having to learn from that experience. Maybe a mistake was made, or maybe that person is the right person for the job. But basically being in a position to learn from that experience. What was it that you did that maybe wasn't as good as you thought it could be? Maybe there's something for you to learn about your own job and how you did. In podcast episodes 32, 33, and 34, we talked about the book Rise. And that book helped me to understand maybe some things that I could have been doing better in the work world. So anytime that you see someone who got a promotion that you hope to get, you don't want to look at them with spite or bad feelings. You want to take and figure out and learn from that experience. So Chip says in this book that we have to see how we can better handle problems. The more experience we get, maybe the better that we're at mastering problems and situations that come up. We get some better judgment when it comes to it. Or maybe we've just seen the problem before and we know how we successfully solved it in the past. But that experience will help you. He says that a modern elder should have insight so that you understand the skills and the value of the people around you. When you have gravitas in your personality, he says, that's when people will listen to you and hang on your word. But it's also a time for you to help other people and bring out the best in all the people around you. There's something to be said about emotional intelligence, that you've learned how to stay calm in bad times, that you understand how certain things work, and so that you even have a little bit of experience with some bad times so that you know how to be caring and empathetic and a bit calm. And that he also feels the part about being a modern elder is that you have more holistic thinking because you've seen the problem from all the different sides. And so you have a wide variety of viewpoints that you can look at a problem from different angles. Then he said there's stewardship, meaning that you have a place with your experience and your perspective to help the company do better to be a steward of what happens next, being responsible for what happens next. And so this is a part where he feels that the elder in the company can really play a role. We have to get out of this mindset of all these generations fighting with each other. The baby boomers. I remember when I was young and out of college and you'd think, oh, the baby boomers have all the good jobs. How am I supposed to get anywhere if they never retire? And then I'm sure the millennials think of the same thing about Gen X and Gen Z's wondering where their place. And there's that struggle for these positions and taking over leadership in a country or leadership in a business. When's it going to be my time? Learning that we can all work together in our own career paths, doing our own types of tasks and not looking at the other people as our competition, looking at the other people as someone who can make our jobs and our lives better and work together at the same time. If we all give each other some empathy, we'll be able to all work together and give each other that experience that we all are looking for, but then those fresh ideas too. And that's what I think this book is really about. He talks a lot about the elders in this part, but it's about how we all can have that mutual respect. If I think I'm an elder, then I might be an advisor or a coach. 
But if I look at myself as an intern, or if the people around me in my company look at themselves as interns, they'll ask good questions, they'll ask why a lot, and they'll try to come up with good reasons about how something is happening and bring a fresh perspective to it. And he says in the end, quote, first of all, not all older people are wise and not all younger people are brilliant. I've met quite a few wise young people, as well as some foolhardy people in their later decades of life. So let's be careful with our stereotyping. And that's exactly right. We should not be stereotyping anything. We should be looking at people for their strengths, their weaknesses, and how they can all contribute to the problem. And he gives some examples in history of where people all mentored each other. He says that Ralph Waldo Emerson mentored Henry David Thoreau. They all have three names. Maya Angelou helped Oprah. William Buffett helped Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Mark Zuckerberg. When you have that mentoring relationship that's there, it can be valuable, not something that we have to worry about or be jealous about. All right, so this is part one of the podcast. The next time we're going to talk about rethinking the different stages in life. Now that we understand that age and experience and fresh ideas are all parts of a company, part of a workplace, what can we do so that we listen to everybody's ideas together? So my challenge to you is figure out which stage are you in in your company. If you've been in a company for a while, you might be more in that mentor phase. If you're new to the company, you might be in that fresh idea learning stage. And figure out where you're at and then give three examples of what you bring to this job. What is it that you have that other people don't have? If you're newer to the organization, maybe you have experience by learning something directly in college that other people didn't know. And you can bring a lot of good ideas. If you're someone who's been established in a company for a long time, maybe you have experience that helps other people become better. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. If you have anything to say to me or you want to tell me how you've been a mentor or an intern, please let me know at jill at smallstepspod.com. And remember that you can be valuable at a company regardless of your duration there by taking small steps.